So I'll make it short. I, I presented portions of this talk in different venues. Uh, so I, I will I'll give again the general idea and we can share, of course, the paper. So basically the, uh, the should have started this presentation or this part of the presentation with a quote uh, and now for something completely different. So this is, uh, this is the work that uh, you know, I've been doing now for over a decade and it has to do with brain imaging. So what I'm interested in recently is connectivity in the brain. So we get data from MRI scans and uh, in this portion of, um, of the talk, what, I, what, what I'll describe is kind of the data that we use from the cortex of the brain. And we concentrate on something called um, cortical thickness or basically how thick, how thick your cortex is, but also connectivity. So this cortex, that's gray matter, the connections, this is white matter. So we're interested in, in those two aspects of the brain and kind of how they interplay. So in the particular problem that we will be addressing here is we have this information about cortical thickness and we want to connect or we want to associate this cortical thickness with some outcome. So our, we are working in the kind of regression frame, framework where we, we have some outcome, we have some predictors and we want to associate them with each other. Now, this is a very old problem, but our question is, can we utilize information? Can we use, utilize external information to inform these associations? Okay, so here we have information. Again, this is high dimensional information. It might be, well, so are not truly really high dimensions that I'll be showing. This will be tens or maybe hundreds of predictors. Then we have this information, additional information about uh, something else about the brain. So the question is, can we incorporate such information in a, in a principled way? So how we do it is through regularization. And this is something that I think it's a nice kind of going with the nice theme of the talks because two weeks ago, uh, Patrick and Johan presented work on regularization, again, the regression setting, where different kind of ways of regularizing the fit or regularizing the, the, the solutions were presented. What we're concentrating on here are extensions to rich estimation or generalized rich estimation. So one of the things here, and this is something, maybe I'll show it here, how we're generalizing <clears throat> this rich regression. It's not via something kind of mathematically driven, but maybe this is, again, coming from the intuitive point of view, we are trying to have the associations between, let's say, certain brain regions and the outcome to be stronger if the connections between those two brain regions are stronger. So here, this AIJ, these are elements of the adjacency matrix or connectivity matrix, which are defined as, so the off-diagonal elements are basically strength of the connections between two different brain regions and the diagonal are, is the sum of all these connectivities. And what we do here, the, how we create this matrix, this uh, is how we create this penalization is via this tool of Laplacian of this adjacency matrix. And again, Laplacian might be familiar from other settings, but basically we have the diagonal, which are the sums, the kind of row wise or column wise sums of the adjacencies. And we subtract the the A, the adjacent, adjacency matrix. So again, here, how we will specify this penalty is via this Laplacian matrix. But the justification for that can come from kind of bottom to the top, saying we have this Laplacian, that's where, how we're penalizing, or we start from the intuition and we say, okay, the, 
the more the adjacent the brain regions are, maybe the penalization should be kind of, that should be taken into account in the penalization. So this is something that we proposed and we extended this method a bit. It had to do with different issues, one with computation, another one with kind of the assumption that we're making here, that there is some information uh, that's useful in this regression problem from the adjacency matrix. So, well, this is our assumption, but we want to be more adaptive here in this method. So instead of saying that, okay, we assume that and we, we will uh, get the results based on this assumption, we add additional penalty, which is just a regular rich penalty, and we let the data decide what's the influence of both of those penalties on the, on the estimation. So we proposed this method, we published that, uh, I think a year ago now, rigidified partial empirical eigenvectors for regression. This is an extension of the method that we published, I think six, seven years ago, called PEER, partially empirical eigenvectors of, 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 for regression. So again, here it's, we get this certain adaptivity of the penalty to the information that we actually have in, the, uh, in this connectivity matrix. And now I'm going very quick through, through that. I, I want to leave more time for the questions and go back to the parts of the presentation that I kind of glossed over. But uh, the main idea here is to, again, to, we propose this estimation and kind of the question that always arises, and this was in the talks two weeks ago as well, a choice of the, these tuning parameters that hopefully can be done in some objective way. For us, the nice way here with the, with the rich regression is that this kind of optimization criterion that we wrote on, wrote on the top of the page is equivalent to the linear mixed model formulation where the selection of the, this tuning parameters is done via maximum likelihood. Let's see, I have a question. Okay. Um, so Chris is asking uh, how this connectivity matrix was obtained. This was estimated, uh, again, this is using algorithms here. I'm relying on my colleagues who actually work with processing of this brain imaging data. So actually what we, what we use here for this connectivity matrix, the simplest way is to use the so-called number of connections or number of fibers or more computational terms, number of streamlines that go from one brain region to another brain region. Another one is, so this is, I'm comparing that usually to kind of how wide the highway or the road is between those brain regions. Another way is if we want to take into account potholes or you know the quality of the road, we use some measures on those fibers to define kind of how good uh, the, this, these connections are. I can discuss this more at the, at the end of the talk. So kind of more with the, the method, of course, if we, uh, we kind of study this method both kind of more theoretically, but also for a simulation study, if we generate the data uh, from the kind of connectivity matrix defined in the left part here, of course, our method should do very well and does very well. But this might actually partially address also Chris's question, what if we don't estimate this connectivity matrix well? So what if we have the situation like in the middle uh, portion here? So we don't get great, we don't use great information. It's still pretty good, but it's not great. What if we have no information? So we get kind of something on the, on the right here. Well, if we use just the rich penalty, well, we don't get any change in the estimation quality where we looked at the estimation of the regression coefficients, if we, if we you know, screw up the information in this connectivity matrix, so is this blue line. If we use the method where we assume we have information, we get the green line here or the green curve, which shows that, well, we're doing well if the connectivity that we use, it's 
is great, so it's here or maybe here. However, at some point, we start losing compared to the risk regression. However, when we lose, we use this, uh, this kind of the approach that we proposed. Up to a certain point, we gain, but then we don't lose. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. If we have information, we can get better estimation. If we don't have information, we're not doing worse than rich regression. So uh, we, the method that we developed, we used that in the kind of in the motivating study where we had about 200 individuals, we consider 66 uh, brain regions. And here is just the kind of output where we associate the, this cortical thickness with one of the neuropsychological outcomes, speed of information processing. One thing that we're happy with was that majority of the results were positive, going in positive direction, meaning that larger or thicker the portion of the brain, the association is positive. That kind of makes sense here. Now, we extended this method to generalized outcomes, so no Gaussian distributions, so any kind of exponential, any member of the exponential family of distributions. We replace here the least squares estimation with the, with the likelihood estimation. Again, here, it's nice, we can associate, we can write it equivalently as a generalized linear mix model. So again, we use that method to, uh, in the same study where we were differentiating HIV negative from HIV negative individuals. Again, this is binary outcome. And here, we, all the findings that we had were in the negative direction, again, it passes the smell test that the smaller cortical thickness uh, predicts or, or contributes to the classification of the HIV patients where HIV positive patients have smaller cortical thickness. So with the first article was published, as I said, last year in Statistics in Biosciences. The second one, it's still under, under review. We have it on... Uh, on BioArchive also we have software associated with that. First one, it's on CRAN. The second one is still in MATLAB. It's available on the GitHub page of uh, my former postdoc, Damian Gisti, who is now in Wrocław, at Technical University of Wrocław. Again, Marta started actually this research with me before she moved to accelerometry. Uh, Tim Randolph is my long-term collaborator from Fred Hatch Cancer Research Center in Seattle. And uh, Chris, to your question, Joaquin Goni, he processed all the connectivity data. He's my collaborator on the kind of brain connectivity side. And Mario Jemicic, in, in collaborating with him on brain imaging for quite a while, for a decade now. All the data came from uh, Boance's lab from Washington University in St. Louis. So I know I kind of went very quickly through this part of the presentation, but I really wanted to leave some time for the questions. <laughs>